Hi everyone, it's MJ and in this video we're going to be looking at question 2 from the September 2017 paper. And this is quite a tricky question, so we're going to go through it slowly and hopefully you're going to be following along. What the question says, it says assume that n independent random variables x1 to xn are observed which all have the discrete distribution given by the following. So x can either be 1, 2, or 3, and it has the following probabilities of which it can take that on. We then get told that the mean is this, and I think they're just doing this, they're trying to be nice, they're giving us a bit of a clue because this is a difficult question, a lot of people do struggle with it. Because then they come, they say, determine the exact distribution of the sample mean. And this is quite difficult because we're used to doing what question two says, the approximate distribution. You know, we like, oh yeah, approximate distribution, central limit theorem, Ooh, we can do this. So question two is quite easy to do and just as well because, you know, that is for the bulk of the marks worth five. But these first three marks can be a little bit tricky because there's no direct formula. What you actually have to do here is, is think a bit. And where your first bit of thinking comes in is you need to think of, you know, what are the possible values of our sample mean? Okay, what are the possible values? And, I mean, the possible values could be a whole range of things. Fortunately, fortunately for us, and this is the big clue, is we have it for n equals to 2. Okay, if n was equal to 1... Okay, the possible values for x bar would be e equal to either 1, 2, or 3, because it will be one of those. But now the fact that n is equal to 2, okay, what this is going to do, okay, our possible values for when n is equal to 2, it means we could have 1, okay, that's when both values n is equal to 1 and 1, we're going to have 1, but if we have 1 and 2, we could get the answer of 1.5. If both our values were 2 and 2, we get the value of 2. If we have 2 and 3, we're going to get 2.5, and if we have 3 and 3, we're going to get 3. Okay, and the nice thing is that if we have 3 and 1, we are going to get to again. So these are the possible values that we can get. And now this is the tricky, well this is the cool part. Just by saying this, by saying the possible values, you're going to be getting half a mark just for saying that. And that is the hardest part of the question. If you figured that out, if you figured out what the possible values were, now to do the actual distribution, it's going to be a piece of cake. Because what you're going to be doing now is let's just write these values out here. The probability that we get 1 is 0 0.6, 2 is 0 0.3, and 3 is 0 0.1. Because now what we can do is say the following. The probability that x bar is equal to 1, this is going to be the situation where the probability x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 1. And that is going to be equal to 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. I'm getting that from these values over here. And that is going to be equal to 0 0.36. The probability that x bar is equal to 1.5. Okay, this is going to equal the probability that x1 equals 1 and x2 equals 2 union with x2 equal to union x, whoops, x1 equals 2, and x2 is equal to 1. Okay, you can see where probability is coming in to, to help us. Um, those two things are the same, so we can just say 2 times, and then we have 0 0.6 times 0 0.3. 0 0.6 times 0 0.3. And our answer is then going to be 0, 0,36 again. Oh, look at that. Um, the probability that x bar is equal to 2, well, this is going to be the situation where we have 2, 2, 
and the situation where we have 3, 1, and 1, 3. So we're going to be having these three situations. So we first have the, the one situation, which is 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. Okay, that's when both are equal to 2. Plus the two situations, where we have 1 and 3 and 3 and 1, which is 0 0.6 times 0 0.1. Okay, and what that's going to give us is 0 0.21. Okay, now the probability that x bar is equal to 2,5. Okay, this is now going to be equal. So we're looking at this. This is in the situations where we have 2 and 3 and 3 and 2, which means we're going to have 0 0.3 times 0 0.1 times that by 2. Um, and hopefully you guys are starting to see a bit of the pattern we have going here. And then the probability that x bar is equal to 3 it's only in the situation where both of our values are equal to 3, and that's 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, which is equal to 0 0.01. What we must always do is then add these values together to just double check that they do equal 1. And this is going to be the probability distribution for our sample mean. Okay. Like I said, it's three marks. These calculations here were very easy, but figuring out the possible values for X bar was the hard part. And the question, you first look at it and you're like, what, I have not done this before. So now you have done it. If this pops up again in the future exam, you'll be ready for it. Okay, whereas part two of the question is, says determine the approximate distribution of X bar for N equals to 50, including all relevant parameters stating any assumptions you make. Well, what we can say is because n is equal to 50, we can now use the central limit theorem to approximate the distribution of x bar. Okay, so must write that out. You must identify for that for n equals 50 that that is large enough for us to use the central limit theorem to approximate the distribution of x bar, okay? You get a mark for that. I mean, you could even say we're gonna, you know, normally distribute it. You, you could say that, you could say that, but central limit theorem kind of implies, implies that. Okay, so the first thing what we need to do is find our expected value for x bar, okay? And we know that the expected value um, of just say one of them is equal to 0 0.6 times 1 plus 0 0.3 times 2 plus 0 0.1 times 3 and this is going to give us 1.5. There, I mean, what I'm basically just doing is taking each of these values, multiplying it by the probability and adding them all up together. Okay. Then what we have is the variance of x bar. This one is a little bit more complicated. Um, what we're going to be having, it's, you know, that whole situation where it's the xi's minus, you know, the whole x bars squared kind of vibe going on. Um, so what we're going to be having, you know, divided by then all of our n's. So we're going to be having a situation where we have 1 minus 1.5 squared times 0 0.6 plus 2 minus 1.5 squared times 0 0.3 plus 3 minus 1.5 squared times 0 0.1 defining that whole thing over our 50 and we see that we're going to get 0 0.45 divided by 50, which is equal to 0 0.009. Okay, and now what we can do is we can use this and this as our two parameters. So we can say the approximate distribution of x bar is... It's normally distributed 
with 1.5 as the mean and 0.009 as our variance. And ta-da, there you are, question done. And um, you can see the second part of it was a lot easier than the first part, but still overall, I, I would say it is a fairly simple question. Like I said, the, the tricky part was just understanding what to do or how to handle it. But yeah, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Cheers.